Okay, Tony, I was a floor man, not a very good one, but my brain has worked out that if you're 80 and you've been in the game for uh, 55 years, you had probably, if you left school at 18 or 16, you had a few years. I was kicked out of school at 14. Well, you want to tell us all about that oh, and, then right. and then tell us where you went next. Uh, right. Um, my school days, I had a very good friend called uh, Phil, and he was also interested in gambling. I, I was interested in it because my dad liked a little punt every now and again. And we got together and uh, we took bets in the school playground. There, was a, there, there were no betting shops then, but uh, penny bets, halfpenny bets, and uh, for an interest. And uh, we took, that's, that's how I really got started, or, or the interest in it. When I went to work, um, I'd done seven years in print and um, I became the firm's bookie. Uh, people ran down to the department that I was working in, passed me on bets. And uh, they were only smallish bets, tanner bets, shilling bets. If I took two bob, I thought it was rich. And um, fortunately for me, we had a betting shop down the road. So if there's a, a multiple bet, like in those days, they're mostly Yankees, I could pop out, run down the road, look at the results, make sure everything was okay. That's how I really got into this, or the feeling of being into it. So when did you, did, so did you start working for Dick? I started for from that, Dick from that business. after I worked in, I worked in the credit office for a year, and it was 1967 that I first started working for Dick. Right, so he didn't, he didn't realise that this little upstart was, was taking his business away from him and offer you a job to stop it, did he? <laughs> no, no, no. I can remember my first day of working for Dick, they placed me as a manager in Willy Street, Reading, and I was working with a girl called Daphne, a lovely lady, and she said, this is your till, Tony, and she gave me money, check your money, and I put it in, and she stood over me, and the next thing I, I felt was clip round the ear of. I said, oi, what are you doing? She said, Tony, it's your first day. I want all the notes the right way around. And that was a lesson to me. And even to today, at uh, all my notes are heads out the right way around. And if people have a big bet to play it, well, it doesn't matter what it is. I make sure I count them with the notes the right way up. The girls think I'm old fashioned. Well, I am bloody old fashioned, I'm 80. <laughs> But they're, they're, it was a lesson learned. Now you talk about lessons. You said that you got chucked out of school. Yeah. But you've glossed over that bit. Why did they throw you out? Was it because of the bookmaking? That was part of it, yeah. They summoned my father and me up to the headmaster's office and it was decided that I would have to leave. I was 14 years of age and that was in the, I think it was April. Um, I was 15 in November and when I was 15, my father took me to it was Simmons Brewery in those days, and he got me a job in the accounts office. That's how I started my working years, for about, I think it was 10 bob a week. <laughs> okay, we can tell by your enthusiasm, and from what you've told us, that you thoroughly enjoy working in the industry, you've been in it all this time, and you still love it. So would you recommend it to anybody that might be watching this now, you know, go and work in a betting shop? Absolutely. Although uh, when I first joined it, it was an absolutely different ball game, I would recommend this uh, position to anybody. What I would say to anybody coming into it, be honest with your employer, em employer and keep your nose clean. That way you'll, you'll build up a good record and you'll always be employable. Right, now your, um, your colleagues Ladies, ladies at work. Ladies listen. at work tell me that you're a bit of a. There's no filter with you, and every day's like a carry on film. Now, for the older <laughs> viewers, carry on films were very British, slightly risque. Uh, <laughs> so, what, what, what do they mean by that? I think the main thing is uh, within the betting shop, you can have a laugh with the girls and you can have a laugh with the customers, as long as it doesn't get too personal or you take it too far. But they are, I must say this, they're good fun to work with. They've helped me along a lot. They, they also tell me that your hobbies 
are horse racing in Phillies, but you're a happily married man. So, uh, <laughs> what, what, what do you get? You know, in your spare time, do you go racing? Do you, what do you, you know, as a hobby, or is it hobby within work? It's a hobby within work. I used to go horse racing, but I haven't been. I took my wife, I think it was three years ago, to Salisbury, and we had a lovely day out. Uh, but I, I, few and far between these days. Okay, no, but you've got you've got fifty years in the industry, more than fifty years in the industry. Any particular stories that you'd like to share with us that's uh, that's happened in that time, whether it be in a betting shop with the whippets on course? We read about the lady who pulled the money out from the yes, cleavage. Yes, uh, big boobs. There was one. Uh, we used to run the Grand Derby, which was at working on the Whippet Derby. Sorry, and uh, there was one absolute brilliant Whippet. And uh, the owner and all his friends, they lived in Mitchum, they came up from Mitchum, and they really thought this whip it was going to win. And uh, well, we filled the satchel up with their money on this whip it. And um, the race began, and he broke well. And I thought, oh my God, what have we done here, Tone? We've done your bollocks. But it, it wasn't to be. Um, there was a, a little black whip it that came right through at the end and just put. The, the back whip it on the post. Save my bacon, save my day, and save my fucking money. <laughs> no, that's it. So were there, were there enough other whip it meetings around to have graded, uh, to have uh, open races and inter track races, that sort of thing? There weren't actually, but um, <clears throat> people came from far and wide uh, down to Wokingham. Um, well, basically from all, the, all over the country. They came from East Anglia, from the north, uh, especially for the Derby, the Whippet Derby, they, they all wanted to try and win it. Okay, and any, when you worked in the betting shops, what's the biggest sort of multiple or something that somebody's had out for you? If you sort of an old lady that's come in and got 333 the one shots and. <laughs> when I, I, I was on my own uh, or in partnership at Wallingford, a guy done a 10 pence win Hines. His name was Ray, I can remember him today. And everyone won, and uh, it came to twelve thousand. Well, we had limits of ten, so when he came in the next day, I had to say, "You do understand, Ray, that you get ten, not twelve. And he did understand. It must have been. Um, did you used to take the football bets on the coupons? Because that must have been quite hairy. Because even you know you can do fourteen match accumulators, you lose your shop if one of those come in. But uh, I suppose you've got your limit there as well. Yeah, limits. Yeah. In, in those days, everything seemed to be governed by limits. Or, or, and the, the other thing was, in the old days with bookmaking, I'm talking about Reading, you didn't see a, a major bookmaker. There were no Coles, Hills, Labrooks. It, they were all small independents, whether they had one shop or two shops or half a dozen shops. That's why people like Lewis Cowan and Dick Brunton, that they bought shops uh, in, in the late well mid 60s yeah then would you take would you take hedging money from other bookmakers in there w would i hedge would, would you take hedging money from other bookmakers if they had something running up would you be quite happy to, to take it off of them with the phone ring and they say we've got a yankee running no up? i didn't but there were times when i phoned i had a very good friend tony milam who uh worked for dick for years he was uh, like a director and if any bit was running up i would always use Tony Milam and Dick Brunton to hedge with. Okay, and of course the football, it's all being played at the same time, so there's no way you can hedge any of exactly, that. Exactly, yeah, yeah, very, very difficult. But in those days, football didn't seem so popular what it is now. Mm. And you say that, um, so you're 80 now, and you, you plan on dying on the job. So my last question <laughs> was going to be, how long do you plan on keep working in the industry? I mean, obviously it's not like a work for you, it's... Uh, well, th there are two things. For as long as Star Sports want me, and for as long as my brain will allow me to do the work, I'll know when it's time to get out. And you get out from, would you tell us where your shop is? It's in Woodley, which is a suburb of Reading. Okay, so anybody wants anybody passing through, wants a bet with Tony Laws, they know where to go. Well, not with me personally. You'll be betting with Star Sports, but you'll always be welcome. Brilliant. Well, Tony, thank you ever so much. Thank you very much. Thanks.